Gentlemen, for the record, I don't like making videos like this because they always kind of come off negative and that's not my point at all. But with that said, we gotta talk. Now, most of you guys know that I live a pretty active social life and I'm out all the time and I'm around people all the time. And now, just to be clear, this is a judgment-free zone and I'm not judging anyone that I see strictly based on their appearance. But the thing is, it's kind of hard not to, right? We all do it. We all make these snap judgments when we see people, especially those people that stand out and our brain just automatically puts them in a box. So today let's chat about some mistakes that a lot of guys make that cause them to stand out for the wrong reasons. Starting with wearing baggy clothes that are just too loose and too baggy. So look, I understand how comfortable it is wearing things that are loose fitting, especially if you're carrying maybe an extra couple pounds and you're trying to maybe hide some things. But by doing that, you're actually making things worse. All right, here's what I mean. If you're mid forties with the typical dad bod or maybe you've got an extra 20 to 25 pounds on you, if you're wearing oversized clothes that also maybe look out of style, you kind of look like the guy who's given up on life. And again, I'm not trying to judge anyone, but if you look around, the next time you're out like at the mall or a restaurant somewhere, just scan the room and look for those guys who look like they've given up. You'll see it right away and you'll notice what they're wearing. The solution is to just pay attention to the fit of the clothes that you wear. And no, I'm not saying that you have to wear anything skinny because it seems like every time I say something about wearing slim fit anything, a lot of guys confuse that term with skinny and they're two completely different things. Slim fit, straight fit, slim straight, athletic taper, all of those pants are different styles and cuts that are made for different body types. And if you say that maybe you have like a difficult body type, chances are there's a pair of jeans out there right now that were actually cut to fit your body better. You just have to be able to put in some time and some effort and just try on a bunch of different things. Okay, the next mistake I just sort of touched on a second ago and that's wearing things that are out of style. Let me say this for the record and it's probably gonna trigger some of you guys, but baggy cargo shorts are out of style, period. So is anything else that's just super baggy that hangs down past your knees. Those were a thing 20 years ago but there are better options today. And yes, I understand that all those pockets are functional, but I seem to do just fine with regular flat front chino shorts carrying my keys, my phone, and my wallet. Now I would suggest looking for a pair of shorts that fall either at your knee or maybe an inch or two above. And also pay attention to that leg opening width because if the leg opening is like two to three times the size of your leg, it looks like you're wearing somebody else's clothes and it makes your legs look super skinny and not really proportional to the rest of your body. Now, another mistake I just see way too often right now are guys wearing a brown belt with black shoes or a black belt with brown shoes. The general rule is this, your belt should match the color and finish of your shoes as closely as possible. And the more formal your outfit is, the more they should actually match. Now, if you're wearing something super casual, right? That's where the line gets to be a little bit blurred. But again, the general rule is to just match your belt to your shoes. For example, this belt with these boots, this belt with these loafers. Now they might not all be a perfectly perfect match, but they're definitely close enough. And there are a lot of times that I will wear a gray belt with white sneakers or this blue and white belt with blue sneakers. Again, just try to get things close. Now here's another one. This belt does not exactly match these tan suede Chelsea boots, but it's pretty close. And because there is some separation distance wise between my waist and my feet, your brain just kind of puts those two colors together as a match. But if those colors were completely different, then there's a problem. Now all these belts I'm showing are from Anson Belt and Buckle. And I've talked about these guys a ton before. And I've mentioned on several occasions that these are basically the only belts I'm wearing anymore because they're good looking, they're amazing quality, and the buckles are interchangeable, and they've got colors and styles to match basically any outfit. And one of the coolest things about Anson belts is never having to worry about a bad fit. All of their belts are designed with this micro adjustment system that always gives you a perfect fit. Now, because traditional belts have 
all those holes that are spaced out like one inch apart and they just never seem to be in the right place. These micro adjustments are spaced out a quarter inch apart. So even after a big pasta dinner, you'll always have a perfect fit. Anson belts are fashionable, they're functional and they're affordable. They also have a ton of different styles and colors and different materials when it comes to all of their belt combinations. Now, the straps come in leather, canvas, nylon, cloth, and micro suede, as well as some vegan and other premium limited edition materials. And they all have these really cool buckle designs and they're all interchangeable, so we can easily swap different buckles to have a different look. So go check out that link down below in the description box and go check out their box sets of three straps and two buckles, or you can do two buckles and three straps, and that's gonna give you six different belt combinations all for $99. You can do maybe a leather dress belt, and then some casual canvas belts, and it also makes a perfect gift for basically anybody. Thank you, Anson Belt, for supporting me and my channel and for sponsoring today's video. Now, another mistake I've been seeing quite a lot, actually, and I'm not really sure why, but it's just really wrinkled up clothing. Now, I understand if it's like a hot day outside and you just got out of the car and the back of your shirt's a little bit steamy and wrinkled, totally understandable. But I guess what I'm talking about is shirts and pants that look like they were just picked up from a wad on the floor. And I know it seems like that doesn't matter, but seriously, gentlemen, it does. It takes maybe five minutes to iron a shirt and a pair of pants both. It's minimal effort, really, that makes a big difference. And look, if you don't maybe feel like ironing or steaming something, just grab a wet towel, throw that in the dryer with that shirt and those pair of pants, and run it for maybe 10 minutes while you're finishing up because that is gonna help kind of relax out all those wrinkles. Okay, this next one is a really big one and it's all about having the right shoes. And I know, gentlemen, I know that most guys don't give a rip about having different shoes for different occasions, but again, it makes a huge difference. So if you have that one pair of athletic sneakers that you wear everywhere, every day, to every single occasion, I want you to think about that. I see guys out all the time at all these fancy wineries and events, and I just think to myself that they could do so much better. And in most cases, the women they're with look absolutely dialed in and terrific, and it just looks like this weird match between the two. Running shoes and flip-flops or sandals are not appropriate footwear when you're out somewhere nice or at a nice restaurant. Are they comfortable? Of course. But you and I both know you can do better. If you like wearing athletic sneakers, maybe look for a pair of minimal leather sneakers that look a lot nicer. If you like wearing sandals or flip-flops, maybe look for a pair of casual loafers or driving mocks that still are breathable and you can still wear without having socks on. Your significant other will definitely appreciate your effort. And that transitions into this next mistake pretty smoothly and it's not dressing for the occasion. You guys, I do a lot of events on a regular basis and a lot of them are somewhat dressy, nothing too crazy, but you know that you're going somewhere to a thing that you bought tickets for on that Friday night and you know you should put in some effort. There's just way too many guys wearing t-shirts that don't fit, baggy jeans that drag on the floor and sandals. And of course, I know you guys, I'm in Southern California and casual culture here is very strong, but let me say this for the record. Most guys just don't look good in t-shirts. If you are fit or athletic, t-shirts are gonna drape on you better and fit you a lot better. But if you've got a dad bod or again, a couple extra pounds, that standard t-shirt is just not your friend. Find something with a collar that gives you some structure around your neck and your shoulders. And if you've got some man boobs, find a short sleeve button down with some pockets on the front that will strategically cover those up. Go for dark solid colors and avoid crazy plaid patterns. The next mistake I see way too often is just mismatched colors and patterns. Now I get it because this one can be a little bit complicated, but let me try to simplify some of it for you. Be very careful of bright and bold patterns. And if you're wearing something with a pattern, make that the only thing. If you've got a striped shirt on, don't wear checkered or window pane trousers. Keep it to just one thing with one pattern because that just makes things a lot easier to remember initially. And by the way, if you missed this video where I talk all about matching, you've got to check it out next. 
And if you're not already, please subscribe. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Live well, and I'll see you in the next one.